Thanks for tuning in, guys, to the Pest and Lawn Digit, and this is What's Wrong With My Lawn? Now, we get calls every so often that say that they have a lawn that looks like this, and they want a lawn that looks like this. So the point of the series is to bring you through my tips and tricks for diagnosing, and I'm going to give you all those steps, so stay tuned in. Now, it's kind of funny because this lawn behind us, we don't service. And then all of a sudden, you see that, that little line there, and now we get into the lawn that we service. It's amazing what a little micronutrients and macronutrients do and a good watering plant. Now, even though you could have everything picture perfect, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna have pockets of problems. So on this episode, we got a, a call from a customer who was uh, really happy with their lawn. It was looking really good and then it started changing. The, the colors started to change and things aren't looking good and it obviously looks sick. So let's go check it out. All right, guys, so let's, let's walk it out. We can see that we've got some issues coming around the corner. And then all of a sudden, everything looks really nice, healthy, and happy. We're getting extremely good color. The color's nice and rich. The only thing it's missing is a lawn stripe machine to stripe this up. Everything's looking the way that I want it to. Again, we've got one little spot that's brown here and there, and then we have the neighbor's lawn. Now this is what I love to see, right? When we put together an action plan that's working, this side here, looks nice and dingy. This side here looks nice and healthy. And that's gonna happen <laughs> when one person is treating their lawn and the other isn't. Um, coming around this corner, you can see everything looks really happy. We've got some issues going around the, uh, going around the trampoline here. And then all of a sudden it goes straight green, healthy and happy. Now, we've got a few weird things going on. Um, this discolor here. But again, we're just talking about pattern. And then all of a sudden, boom! We had so much dead grass, they called me in a panic and said everything was coming out like uh, sheets, sheets of pizza. Like they literally touch it and it fall out in their hand. Now this area is kind of a special, a special place. It's a, it's a ravine for water runoff. So far, I think it's safe to say that the overall pattern is isolated into chunks of different problems. So we're going to do overall diagnosis in the entire lawn to see if we need to do preventive measures as well as curative measures. But we're really going to focus on these individual areas. But let's get started. Let's check it out. So our next step in the process, or step number two, is checking out color. Color is going to be an indic indicator. Uh, some of these colors are going to be lack of water. Some of them are going to be uh, nutrient indeficiencies and others could be burning. So our first area, you can see the shape. And this, this falls under step number one, under pattern. We also look at shapes. You can see that it's got kind of a kind of round edges with sporadic corners. Now this is a common indication of drought. Step number two is identifying the color. Now this color is also brown, which also insinuates lack of water. Now you can see that the self-repairing Kentucky bluegrass is starting to shoot rhizomes, which tells me it more than likely had a history of drought problems. Now I don't want to just come to this conclusion, so we're going to take a moment and we're going to grab the soil probe and also check the water saturation uh, as well as checking doing a thatch test. And this is going to be an important part to tell. Now when we're doing the thatch test, uh, right before the thatch test, I like to tug on the grass uh, to see if we're if we have any turf insects present. So I like to check the edges, and as you can see, it's all tight. So we can safely assume no insect problems. Step number, I'm going to use my AMS soil probe, which I'm pretty happy with, and check for watering. Now. A couple of things about this is we're pulling the soil probe, but you can see these top layers are extremely dry and crumbly. The bottom layers at this point have water. Now that normally would bother me, but looking at this, we've got a sandy kind of top layer and then it turns to a sandy loam. These bottom layers are gonna hold more water, but I think it's safe to say the root zone's dead and this has suffered a lot of drought. I'm still going to take a thatch test to see if the uh, fertilizer is or is not penetrating. Okay. 
So the one thing that I'm learning, and we're kind of moving fast today, guys, and you might want to check out some of my other videos if this is going too fast, but you can see shallow roots. This is a little crazy to have roots sitting on top, which kind of makes me wonder if we're dealing with a shallow root problem throughout the entire lawn. Now, part of the thatch test, I actually like to look in to see what we're dealing with. And looking in here, I can really see that the, the layers of the um, roots are extremely shallow. I mean, this is my my layer of roots right here. I mean, it's, it's dirt right here. So we are dealing with shallow root issues. So we need to put together a game plan for that. So safe to say spot number one, we're definitely dealing with sprinkler coverage issues. The water's not hitting right and therefore the lawn isn't growing right. We also discovered that we have shallow root problems. So I'm gonna hit another couple of these spots, see if it's consistent throughout, but let's check spot number two. All right guys, so another random spot. Now this, this pattern is commonly confusing because of the lack of pattern um, and kind of the pitted out areas. This could be anything between turf insects um, all the way to just drought. Now one thing I like to look at is color and this has a brown color to it, uh, common with water. Uh, but again, you want to go through each individual step. So step number one, we look at pattern. Step number two, we look at color. The pattern and color tell me that I'm dealing with a, a droughted issue with possible insects. Uh, the shape is also giving me the exact same idea as well. Uh, step number three is going to be our pull test uh, on this just to see if we're dealing with turf insects and everything appears to be intact the way that it needs to be. Um, step number four, again, I'm gonna do a soil probe. Now, one thing about the soil probe that you guys need to understand at home is you wanna start with a really, really green area nearby just to see what it commonly would be. Now, I'm pulling some pretty deep plugs here, about six to eight inches. Uh, the soil here is really interesting because we go from having kind of a, a sand to a sandy loam uh, all halfway through here, all the way down to clay, which is pretty crazy. Now, the one thing that I'm noticing though, is I'm not getting any roots that are deep. So we know we've got an overall health issue throughout the lawn. Now, looking at it, you know, some of these like here, I just pulled the second plug and I've got roots, but it, they're not really thick. They're not really long and there is the majority of my root right there that's only going down four inches instead of 12. So I know we have an overall issue of health through the lawn. Um, going to the spots that are, that are here, you can kind of see, again, we've got that really weird clay layer. We've got some topical roots going on, but for the most part, they've given up. It appears that these areas are really old, and I think we can safely say water management is an issue. Even though this is wet, it's got so much sand in it, chances are it wasn't getting water at the time. Um, my guess is now the watering's been fixed, but if I were to guess, shallow roots is usually an indication somebody's been daily watering. Now, moving on to the thatch test. I want to do a thatch test on the inside and outside layer. Removing some of this excess thatch is also going to help, but as you can see, I'm just pulling roots. And again, when you start pulling roots like this, we know that we have a shallow root issue. But check this out. <laughs> Crazy. Mr. Grub, what are the chances? And that is why we do a thatch test and a pull test, guys. Um, so we know that part of these damages are grub related. Um, you can see this little guy kind of squirming and look, he's got friends and this happens a lot. Um, now what I need to do is to put down a different game plan to ensure that we can get rid of these guys. Now grub season in this area, this is pretty late for grub season. Usually by the mid to end of August, we're out of grub season. So I'm guessing that the uh, climate here is different than even a city over staying a little bit warmer later and colder later as well. Um, but these guys are creepy. If you've ever seen these up front, um, they don't really bite, but 
great for fishing, <laughs> but they are creepy, creepy little dudes. You got that big copper head on them, and these actually come from a bill bug uh, who lays the eggs typically at the end of May. And digging even deeper, there's number three. So <laughs> I think it's safe to say we are going to have to do a curative insecticide. But guys, this is exactly why we go through all these steps. It would have been really easy for me to come to the conclusion that this was just a watering problem. It's crazy how things can change. Typical grub damages would have been almost 20, 30 days ago, and here we are almost to September finding issues. Now it's not uncommon, but this is why we go through all these steps. Now my next goal is, is just because everything is green doesn't mean it's not susceptible to grubs at this point. Now I do find that you can limit your chances of grub damages by having deeper roots, healthier grass, and keeping a thinner thatch layer. A lot of times grubs will come in because uh, the grass is in a weakened state. It's not always the case, but it's always best to have a nice, healthy lawn to kind of thwart off weeds and pests. Now, as we walk to the next spot, which is spot number three, I'm just gonna do a random pull test through the lawn. Now, we wanna make sure that we do this to ensure that we don't have um, any other issues with grubs, just because at this point, it looks nice and healthy and green doesn't mean that we're not going to have some potential pockets of problems. So it's really important that you guys don't stop doing this throughout the entire lawn. Now, it really doesn't take that long. I mean, what, we're 15, 20 seconds walking over the course of a thousand square feet just taking random plugs. Now, another issue I want to talk to you guys about, guys, this is not mulch. This is dead grass, and it looks like this person is actually uh, not bagging their clippings, but they're also not following the mulching rules, too. If you're truly mulching, you won't find that dead grass. Now, the reason why I'm even talking about this dead grass is because sod webworms and a lot of your turf insects, they don't care about the living grass. They care about the dead grass. They'll actually go through the top or the crown of the grass and eat the dead and cause the damages. Well, here we are to spot number three. Now you viewers at home, I'm hoping that at this point you guys try to jump to the conclusion on what I'm about to say. Now a lot of these issues you can actually uh, figure out just by a simple picture. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier than most, but I'm still gonna walk you through it. Step number one, we're looking for overall pattern. Again, this has another one of those weird patterns. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of sporadic. Uh, which can indicate bug activity or previous drought issues. Um, when we get these pitted areas uh, like we do, where it just looks like uh, dots on a leopard, it usually tells me it has a history of drought problems. Um, the other thing that I want to look at is color. Uh, this has a brown color to it, which many of you guys know at this point is either going to be insect or pest related. Um, but the thing that's got me puzzled on this one is we've got that pockets of green right before. So that could mean that they have a history of drought stress and now that they fixed the water coverage, uh, now it's been repaired and the self-repairing rhizomes of the Kentucky bluegrass are doing what they do best and that's pushing rhizomes uh, to form new blade growth. Um, next up, uh, we want to do that pull test again. We want to do water saturation uh, test and we want to check the thatch layers again. Um, so let's just start with the watering. So this area is 100% sand and it feels like we've got about uh, 80% of the water that we'd like. I, I really think because of the color that they have, they've been daily watering. I'd like to see that every other day. Now, sometimes that can be tricky with sand. You might not be able to get down to a, a flood irrigation uh, once to two times a week, and I'm okay with that, but daily watering promotes shallow roots. So we definitely don't want to do that, but it looks like they have decent root growth in this area. I'm seeing roots, you know, six to eight inches down, also not uncommon with sandy soil. Um, Moving on to the thatch test, I want to pull right outside the region. And as you can see, more shallow roots. And this is a big issue here. 
Um, <laughs> and again, holy cow, I've been pulling, uh, doing pull tests throughout this whole thing. And what do we find again? More grubs. And again, guys, they're going to attack the weakened grass before they attack the live grass. So this is not shocking. Now, I think I've discovered why we have these random patterns. As you can see here, we've got these holes. Now these holes are about the size of a golf ball. They're going around this trampoline. And in our area of Utah, we get a little critter called a vole. It's a cross between a mouse and a gopher. Now these will create these tracks. As you can see here, they create these tracks. They need to be filled back in with sand, but I think that is uh, pretty much summing up all these weird little track marks. Now, sometimes you can put enough phosphorus and enough macronutrients to force some growth, but the problem is they dig that dirt out and cause some issues. So spot number three, I think we can safely say we've got issues with grubs, history of drought, and voles. We got some lawn drama, guys. Uh, so what I want to do at this point is do a thatch test through the rest of the lawn just to make sure that uh, we're not dealing with more grubs. I think it's safe to say we've got shallow roots to this whole lawn, and that's primary causation right now. We don't have a thatch layer that's thick enough and dense enough through the soil layer. It's all sitting as a crown layer on top of the soil, and that's causation. So here's the good news. The good news is no more grubs. Bad news is... The roots are so shallow. It's kind of ridiculous. Like it literally just pulls up like sheets, even without the bugs. Um, the good news is the, the crown layer is really thick. So it's warding off weeds. As you can see, I mean, the color is decent. I mean, look at the color difference between the neighbors and them. Um, but at the same time, guys, shallow roots, it just causes a lot of problems. So our last spot, the, uh, the, the customer panicked, and this is common out here. Um, <laughs> they started pulling it up, and it just came up like sheets of pizza, guys. Um, I don't recommend doing this. You could do macronutrients at uh, three-quarters pound of nitrogen and a ton of potassium, and some of the grass will come back. But uh, in this instance, they wanted a quick fix. They're most likely going to resaw this area. But uh, let me show you something here real quick. So I'm going to do a little pull test on the edge here where it's dead. Oh, hello. Good morning, people. <laughs> oh, man, this is crazy. I mean, look at that. And then there's that guy there. And it just keeps going and going and going. Yummy. One of the misnomers in the industry that I wanted to kind of talk about was the preventive measurements of insecticides. They don't prevent damages. They actually make it so the damages are minimized. These are systemic products that go through the plant. So as the insect eats, he gets the insecticide and dies. So here's the time that you've all been waiting for. Guys, how are we going to solve this problem, Ginger? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to solve this problem a couple different ways. We're going to do, number one, we're going to do lawn aeration. Now, this is going to open up core plugs so we can get the insecticides in there as soon as possible. Insecticide-wise, uh, I'm going to put the... Uh, links to the products in the description so you guys can have those. I'm going to post some products that are really cheap to mix together, but for those of you who just want a real quick granular, we're going to, I'm going to post that too. The products that I'm going to put down are a curative and a preventive. Our curative measure is going to be a lambda cyhalothrin. I want something that gets in there fast and that starts killing now. Our preventive measurements are typically going to be made out of imidacloprid. They're going to travel through the plant because we're coming on to turf insect season for cranberry girdlers and sod webworms. So I need something that's both curative and preventive. Your preventive measures are gonna last anywhere between uh, eight and 12 weeks, but you gotta keep them wet and you gotta keep them healthy as well. I'm going to add an additional product called Pentrabark. Now the idea behind the Pentrabark is it helps open the spores of the uh, grass blades that help the insecticides actually penetrate the grass blades giving you some curative and preventive measurements, but it gets the insecticides in there ASAP. Now, if you're just using a preventive insecticides, it can take almost 10 days. Now, the other thing is, is I wanna start uh, 
attacking those shallow roots now. So my recommendation is to use the lawn aeration to do an overseed. In this instance, they have a pure Kentucky bluegrass, so that's gonna be my recommendation. Now, Kentucky bluegrass does take a little while to uh, germinate, and so they're gonna have to stay on top of the watering. If you want something fast, fast acting, that RTF Tall Fescue by Bearbrug is my number one choice. All right, guys, we got them holes with the voles. <laughs> the best thing you can do with these is hit it with zinc phosphide. It's labeled for voles and gophers. Um, typically on the label, you're going to do localized treatments with a little teaspoon every 8 to 16 feet in the holes. Now, it's got a real pungent smell to it. I find that dogs and cats don't like to go after it, uh, which is the best part. But you want to make sure you stay localized. Now, as for preventive measures, because that's just a curative measure, you can find uh, repellents online that are made out of castor oil, a special blend of garlics and peppers. Heck, it might work on the vampires at the same time, too. Now, if you decide to go with a repellent route, it's, it's important that you reapply every month. Since it's an organic solution, you want to start at the outside of the base of the home first and then step it out 10 feet after every application. This kind of pushes the voles away from the structure. Now, voles are an interesting creature. The only thing they want to do is infiltrate foundations, and that's why it's not uncommon to see them around trampolines and rock walls. So guys, that wraps it up for another episode of What's Wrong With My Lawn? Now this one was a little crazy. We have about two or three things going on, but just remember guys, it all starts with watering. 90% of the issues that I come and see, if the lawn had been healthy from the get-go and had they had appropriate watering, we wouldn't have these issues. If you guys like what I do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. And if you like my videos, hit me up with a comment and hit the like button. Love to help you guys out. We'll see you on the next time. Bye.